Welcome to section 3.3 part B. Oh, that's funny. I just noticed I didn't even type section right. Section. Section 3.3 part B. I feel so much better about myself now. So I'm going to walk you through some of this Excel stuff and formulas. Um, I'm actually going to start on number 10. I know the directions on 10 through 13 say to use your calculator. However, I've become a really big fan on Excel and I can show you how to do it in Excel. If you've already done it with your calculator, you can skip this part of the video and um, skip to where you see me doing number 14 and you can pick up the tips from there but here's how you can use Excel to you for basically any formula you want even a savings plan formula I've put the the formula right up here a equals principal and then in parentheses 1 plus R over n parentheses to the power of n times y so let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so if you want to do it in Excel, you can pause the video now and just set this up the same way that I do. And um, then you can turn it back on and we'll get to work together. All right, so number 10, the principal is $200. The interest rate is 8% and of course we change that to a decimal. The number of years, Y is 15 and the number of compoundings per year, they have it at the very top next to number 10, is one compounding per year. Okay, now this particular part, 1 plus R over N, comes from what is in the formula. And I wanted to calculate that out separately just to make it easier to work on. So since I'm going to make a calculation, I need to start with an equal sign. So it's equals 1 plus, and I need to divide R divided by N. So where is my R? That's my interest rate. And then divide, and my N is in box right about here, E4 and then hit equals. So it just did 1 plus, um, 1 plus 0 0.08 because 0 0.08 divided by 1 is just 0 0.08. Isn't that nice? All right, so now we're going to type the formula in. So it'll give us the amount, the amount that would be in our savings account at the end of 15 years. So since we're going to type a formula, we always start with an equal sign. And then the next one is P for principal. And our principal is over here, and I'm going to click on the box, and mine happens to be B4. And then I'm going to multiply it, because when you have a letter next to a parentheses, it means to multiply. So I'm going to multiply by this 1 plus R over N, and that is found, in my case, box F4. And then I need to raise that to the power of NY. To do an exponent, you do shift 6, and that is your trick to the exponent. It's that little caret symbol. And since I have to raise it to N and Y, I'm going to put that in parentheses. My N is found in, oh, there's my N, in box E4 times my Y, which is found in box D4, and then close my parentheses and hit enter. And I ended up with $634.43 and that's how much money I would have in my savings account if one day I put in $200 and it was earning 8% every year for 15 years. That would be actually be pretty awesome because you made $434 without doing anything. All right, well let's do some more savings plan. Let's let's keep it going. Now, the awesome thing about Excel is it likes to do the work for you. It is so nice. And for problems 11, 12, and 13, it has the same principle, interest rate, and number of years. I can't get any better than that, so I'm going to highlight all three cells. And notice, I don't know why my cursor is a little crazy tonight, but when that fat cross gets close to the bottom right corner, it turns into a skinny cross. Left click and drag it down. And so I don't have to type that, you know, all those times. The compoundings change. So number 11, we're going to do four compoundings per year. Number 12 is 12 compoundings per year. That'd be once a month. So that's actually more realistic as they compound it once a month. And number 13 is like the score. They're going to compound your interest every day of the year. Sweet. Okay. Now we need to do this little part that's in the parentheses. And since we use cell data, C4, E4, and a 1 plus, I can just copy it straight down. So again, my fat cursor turns into a skinny cross, drag it down, and that's our data. And we could do it also here because we used, again, cell data. There's no just regular old numbers. We use cell data. It's going to calculate all of the answers for us. Um, looks like I need to slide my little boxes over here because I can't get my, there we go, now I can get my cross in the right spot and drag it down. So if we had our interest compounded every single day for 15 years, the most we could make is $663.94, which is better than it once a year. So 
something to think about when you're putting money in the bank. Money in the bank. Yeah, we're going to do some money in the bank. All right. So now the part that you really need to do is starting on number 14. And it says using a spreadsheet and the future value formula, fill out the table for a savings account. So you need to use the future value formula. This is the future value formula and it is gigantic and not calculator friendly in my opinion. So I'm just going to tell you that. So we're going to practice using Excel and inputting the future value formula together. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so again, make sure you set up 14 through 17 the same way I do, and then you can pause the video while you do that, and then when you come back, we'll be working together and getting it done. All right, number 14, our principal is $200, so we're going to start out with $200 in our savings account. Our interest rate is 7%. The number of years is 15, and the compoundings for each year on number 14 is one year. And it would like to know what our future value would be at the end of that time. Well, that's a great question to ask. So because this is a little bit trickier, <laughs> I mean, our last one was just this parentheses, R over N and Y, and this has a payment in it and not a principal value. Anyway, it's getting crazy. Let's go up here to where you see this F of X, and when you hover over it, it pops up a little box that says insert function and that's what we want to do is we want to insert a function so click on that left click and we want to find the future value function which is FV and then once you find FV in the list click OK all right so it'd like to know the rate now that's not just the interest rate the rate is the interest rate so I'm gonna click on box for me it's C4 but it's the interest rate divided by the compoundings per year. So it's interest rate divided by N, and here's my box where N is. Again, using cell data allows us to copy the information over and over again without having to type the formula in again. So it's awesome. So click on the cells. All right, let's go down to the next one, N per. N per is done by clicking N, so how many compoundings per year, and we need to times it, so we're going to multiply it by however many years, which is found in this particular box for me, D4. Payment, PMT. Our payment is, well, how much are we going to pay? Well, we're not going to pay anything, so I just have to put zero so there's no payment and then my principal value PV is what am I starting out with well in this case I'm gonna put a negative sign here and the no wrong box back up I need to go to PV first and then put a negative sign in because I'm getting rid of that money I am expending the two hundred dollars um, so I don't have it so while it's earning interest and being at the bank and working for me I don't have that $200 so I'm losing it so it's a negative and then I'm gonna click on where how much I'm losing which isn't located in box B4 alright and I don't have to do anything in the box for type I click OK and it tells me oh well hey if you put in $200 at 7% interest for 15 years um, you're gonna have five hundred and fifty one dollars and eighty one cents that's your future value Okay, works for me. Well, let's take a look at what 15, 16, and 17 are going to tell us. So they all have the same principal, interest rate, and they're all 15 years. So I'm going to highlight those three cells. I'm going to drag my fat cross until it turns to a skinny cross. Left click and drag it down so that way I don't have to type. And then the compoundings per year is what's going to change. So this one is going to be compounded every quarter. Number 16 is every month and number 17 is 365 and I just like to do all of them because quite honestly I'm gonna copy this formula and find out what my future value will be for all of them and I can do it at one shot so I take my fat cross squeeze it all the way over here till it gets a skinny cross left click drag it down and let's see how we did so our future value would be five hundred and seventy one dollars and forty seven cents at the end of fifteen years at seven percent interest and notice the interest rates different when we did um, the simple interest rate our interest rate was eight percent and we had the same principal same number of years same compounding so we ended up with almost an extra hundred bucks I mean interest rate makes a difference so I'm telling you right now get the most interest you can okay now let's move on to payment to find your monthly payment this is where the rubber hits the road folks this formula is going to allow you to figure out let's say you are wanted to purchase a car or you want to purchase a boat 
or you need to take out a loan um, and you want to add to, you're making a payment every month you can type in the amount of the loan the interest rate how many years how many compoundings which in this case the most loans and um, those things do 12 a year and you can find your payment I know blow your brains I mean right now you could be like oh my gosh what if I refinance my car I have this much left on it and you could find out what the payment is based off the interest rate I went through a credit loan I found it. they have a lower interest rate but trust me interest rate makes a big difference now I'm starting with 18 through 21 because there's no way on earth that I would actually ever put that formula and use my calculator I'm just gonna tell you right now I'm just gonna do it this way you can use your calculator and write everything down I, good luck on that one but Excel is my friend <laughs> so I'm doing 18 through 25 right here so here we go the principal for number 18 is three hundred dollars so the loan amount is three hundred dollars that's what we're starting out with um, our interest rate is 0 0.08 this is a two-year loan and compounded at 12 um, compoundings per year and now we need the payment alrighty so we're gonna go all the way back up here to f of x insert function click on it but this time we need the payment we want to find out our payment and it's this one right here PMT click OK alrighty so rate is just like what we did with future value you have to take the interest rate so click on the cell where your interest rate is and hit divide and it's how many times per year is it being compounded so it's gonna be 12 times per year and that's found in this particular box alright remember use cell data cell location and per same as on future value um, number of compoundings per year so and how many years it's gonna go so we're gonna do our n which is found in box e3 in my case and it's times the number of years we need to know how many times it's gonna happen and in my case it's in d3 so I'm not sure where yours is that alright PV okay this is our loan amount how much of the loan you're taking out and we don't need to put it as negative because we're not losing the money quite honestly we're gaining that three hundred dollars because we're getting a loan for three hundred dollars yo yo you're my favorite brother in the whole wide world please loan me three hundred dollars well we're gonna set up a payment plan and interest rate that's the kind of brother you have right or was it your sister so we're gonna click on where the location is for the principal amount or that loan amount and again it's not negative because you don't have the money future value now you have to pay the loan back so in the end the future value is going to be zero because you have to pay it off so at the end of the term of the loan you owe zero alright and again on type you leave it blank and let's click OK alright it says thirteen dollars and fifty seven cents that would be your monthly payment to your brother who loaned you three hundred dollars and said you had two years to pay it back at eight percent interest and he compounded it every month thirteen fifty seven a month is what you'd be writing a check for or giving it to him and change why do you think it's in red and why do you think it has parentheses well that's how Excel tells you that you are in the negative so when it's negative they automatically said hey you're gonna be losing this money because you have to pay it back and that's how they show you it's negative alright so let's do some more that wasn't too bad alright number 19 we're gonna get a loan for three thousand dollars interest rate nine percent oh it went up and how many years do we have five years I don't think I'm gonna like this and it's gonna be compounded each month so for 12 compoundings per year and we're just going to click on our little payment here um, of $13.57 because if you look up here I used all cell data except for the zero because it's going to be zero when it's done I can take my fat cross get close to the bottom corner skinny cross and drag it down so my payment is $62.28 every single month for five years to pay back three grand I don't know do you really want to pay back five years three grand all right let's go we've got fifteen hundred dollars in number twenty interest rate fifteen percent oh my gosh it's getting worse how many years twelve years compounded every single month I can tell I don't like to take out loans will our do you think okay so it's half the amount but the interest is almost double and the length of time do you think the payment will be the same or less come on we're paying back less I don't know but let's just go ahead we're gonna just drag it down again fat cross when it gets skinny drag it down Oh, it went down okay well you know we have to take a guess I mean take an educated guess you have half the amount of money but you have more time to pay it back so twenty two dollars and fifty one cents every month all right number twenty one number twenty one is twenty three thousand dollars you're buying a car now we have moved up we are not taking out loans from our brother 
8% interest. For 30 years? Okay, that is not a car loan. You bought a small house. <laughs> 30 years, 12 compoundings per year. What will be the payment on it? So we're just going to copy it and drag it down. $168.77 for 30 years. So that's how you can use the payment function. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to do the next four on your own. And then I want you to come back and check to see if we match. And how you're going to be graded on this is I'm going to click on the cell where the payment's at. And I'm going to look at the top to make sure you are using the payment function. Very important. Oh, and I just totally messed up here. Let me just hit enter. I don't want to lose my numbers. Okay, so check back me with a second and we'll make sure that um, everything, is, everything is good. All right. So welcome back. So we have 22 through 25. We have different principal amounts, different interest rates. We had different number of years. Ooh, this one was 20 years for that $23,000 loan. Um, and then we find out what our payment is. So I could like to compare number 21 with number 25 because they have um, the same interest rate, the same loan amount, but 10 years less. So by taking 10 years off the loan, it didn't raise your payment all that much. It raised it by what, less than? less than 30 bucks, raised about 20, 25 bucks. Um, so you can see a big difference in just by paying it off in less time. So I hope that helped you with um, setting up the problems in Excel and makes it a little bit easier on you as you have to submit the assignment this week. So if you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day.